In mathematics, Newton's identities, also known as the Newton-Girard formulae, give relations between two types of symmetric polynomials, namely between power sums and elementary symmetric polynomials, evaluated at the roots of a monic polynomial p in one variable. They allow expressing the sums of the kth powers of all roots of p in terms of the coefficients of p, without actually finding those roots. These identities were found by Isaac Newton around 1666, apparently in ignorance of earlier work by Albert Girard. They have applications in many areas of mathematics, including Galois theory, invariant theory, group theory, combinatorics, as well as further applications outside mathematics, including general relativity, mathematical statement. Formulation in terms of symmetric polynomials let x1, xn be variables, denote for k1 by pk the kth power sum, and for k0 denote by ek the elementary symmetric polynomial, so then Newton's identities can be stated as valid for all n1 and k1. Also, one has for all k greater than n1. Concretely, one gets for the first few values of k. The form and validity of these equations do not depend on the number n of variables, which makes it possible to state them as identities in the ring of symmetric functions. In that ring one has and so on, here the left-hand sides never become zero. These equations allow to recursively express the a in terms of the pk, to be able to do the inverse, one may rewrite them as in general. We have valid for all n1 and k1. Also, one has for all k greater than n1. Application to the roots of a polynomial The polynomial with roots she may be expanded as where the coefficients are the symmetric polynomials defined above. Given the power sums of the roots the coefficients of the polynomial with roots may be expressed recursively in terms of the power sums as formulating polynomial this way is useful in using the method of Dells and Linus to find the zeros of an analytic function. Application to the characteristic polynomial of a matrix when the polynomial above is the characteristic polynomial of a matrix A. The roots are the eigenvalues of the matrix, counted with their algebraic multiplicity. For any positive integer k, the matrix ACK has as eigenvalues the powers x i k, and each eigenvalue of a contributes its multiplicity to that of the eigenvalue x i k of ACK. Then the coefficients of the characteristic polynomial of ACK are given by the elementary symmetric polynomials in those powers x i k, in particular, the sum of the x i k, which is the kth power sum s k of the roots of the characteristic polynomial of A, is given by its trace. The Newton identities now relate the traces of the powers act to the coefficients of the characteristic polynomial of A, using them in reverse to express the elementary symmetric polynomials in terms of the power sums. They can be used to find the characteristic polynomial by computing only the powers ACK and their traces. This computation requires computing the traces of matrix powers ACK and solving a triangular system of equations. Both can be done in complexity class NC. Therefore, characteristic polynomial of a matrix can be computed in NC. By the Cayley-Hamilton theorem, every matrix satisfies its characteristic polynomial, and a simple transformation allows to find the matrix inverse in NC. Rearranging the computations into an efficient form led to the Fadiv-Leveria algorithm. A fast parallel implementation of it is due to L. C. Sankey. Its disadvantage is that it requires division by integers, so in general the fields should have characteristic relation with Galois theory for a given n. The elementary symmetric polynomials ek for k equals 1, n form an algebraic basis for the space of symmetric polynomials in x1, xn. Every polynomial expression in the she that is invariant under all permutations of those variables is given by a polynomial expression in those elementary symmetric polynomials and this expression is unique up to equivalence of polynomial expressions. This is a general fact known as the fundamental theorem of symmetric polynomials. 
and Newton's identities provide explicit formulae in the case of power sum symmetric polynomials. Apply to the monic polynomial with all coefficients at considered as free parameters. This means that every symmetric polynomial expression S in its roots can be expressed instead as a polynomial expression P in terms of its coefficients only. In other words, without requiring knowledge of the roots. This fact also follows from general considerations in Galois theory. The Newton identities also permit expressing the elementary symmetric polynomials in terms of the power sum symmetric polynomials, showing that any symmetric polynomial can also be expressed in the power sums. In fact, the first n power sums also form an algebraic basis for the space of symmetric polynomials. Related identities there are a number of identities that, while they should be distinguished from Newton's identities, are very closely related to them. A variant using complete homogeneous symmetric polynomials denoting by HK the complete homogeneous symmetric polynomial that is the sum of all monomials of degree K. The power sum polynomials also satisfy identities similar to Newton's identities but not involving any minor signs. Expressed as identities of in the ring of symmetric functions, they read valid for all nk1. Contrary to Newton's identities, the left-hand sides do not become zero for large k, and the right-hand sides contain ever more non-zero terms. For the first few values of k, one has these relations can be justified by an argument analogous to the one by comparing coefficients in power series given above based in this case on the generating function identity proofs of Newton's identities, like these given below, cannot be easily adapted to prove these variants of those identities. Expressing elementary symmetric polynomials in terms of power sums as mentioned, Newton's identities can be used to recursively express elementary symmetric polynomials in terms of power sums. Doing so requires the introduction of integer denominators, so it can be done in the ring lambda q of symmetric functions with rational coefficients, and so forth. Applied to a monic polynomial, these formulae express the coefficients in terms of the power sums of the roots. Replace each a by i and each pk by sk, expressing complete homogeneous symmetric polynomials in terms of power sums the analogous relations involving complete homogeneous symmetric polynomials can be similarly developed, giving equations and so forth in which there are only plus signs. These expressions correspond exactly to the cycle index polynomials of the symmetric groups. If one interprets the power sums π as indeterminates, the coefficient in the expression for hk of any monomial p1 m1 p2 m2 plml is equal to the fraction of all permutations of k that have m1 fixed points. M2 cycles of length 2, and ML cycles of length L, explicitly. This coefficient can be written as where, this n is the number permutations commuting with any given permutation pi of the given cycle type. The expressions for the elementary symmetric functions have coefficients with the same absolute value, but a sign equal to the sign of pi, namely M2 plus M4 plus. It can be proved by considering the following inductive step. Expressing power sums in terms of elementary symmetric polynomials One may also use Newton's identities to express power sums in terms of symmetric polynomials, which does not introduce denominators. The first four formulas were obtained by Albert Girard in 1629. The general formula is which can be proved by considering the following inductive step. Expressing power sums in terms of complete homogeneous symmetric polynomials Finally one may use the variant identities involving complete homogeneous symmetric polynomials similarly to express power sums in term of them, and so on. Apart from the replacement of each a by the corresponding high, the only change with respect to the previous family of identities is in the signs of the terms, which in this case depend just on the number of factors present. 
The sign of the monomial is minus m1 plus m2 plus m3 plus, in particular the above description of the absolute value of the coefficients applies here as well. The general formula is, expressions as determinants one can obtain explicit formulas for the above expressions in the form of determinants. By considering the first n of Newton's identities as linear equations in which the elementary symmetric functions are known and the power sums are unknowns, and apply Kramer's rule to find the solution for the final unknown. For instance, taking Newton's identities in the form we consider, and as unknowns, and solve for the final one. Giving solving for instead of for is similar, as the analogous computations for the complete homogeneous symmetric polynomials, in each case the details are slightly messier than the final results, which are, note that the use of determinants makes that the formula for has additional minus signs compared to the one for, while the situation for the expanded form given earlier is opposite. As remarked in one can alternatively obtain the formula for by taking the permanent of the matrix for instead of the determinant, and more generally an expression for any sure polynomial can be obtained by taking the corresponding amount of this matrix. Derivation of the identities Each of Newton's identities can easily be checked by elementary algebra, however, their validity in general needs a proof. Here are some possible derivations. From the special case n equals k1 can obtain the kth Newton identity in k variables by substitution into as follows. Substituting xj for t gives summing over all j gives where the terms for i equals 0 were taken out of the sum because p0 is not defined. This equation immediately gives the kth Newton identity in k variables. Since this is an identity of symmetric polynomials of degree k, its validity for any number of variables follows from its validity for k variables. Concretely, the identities in n less than k variables can be deduced by setting k minus n variables to zero. The kth Newton identity in n greater than k variables contains more terms on both sides of the equation than the one in k variables but its validity will be assured if the coefficients of any monomial match, because no individual monomial involves more than k of the variables. The monomial will survive the substitution of zero for some set of n minus k variables, after which the equality of coefficients is one that arises in the kth Newton identity in k variables. Comparing coefficients in series in other derivation can be obtained by computations in the ring of formal power series R, T, where R is Z, X1, Xn, the ring of polynomials in n variables X1, Xn over the integers. Starting again from the basic relation and reversing the polynomials by substituting 1, t for t and then multiplying both sides by Tennessee to remove negative powers of t, give swapping sides and expressing the i as the elementary symmetric polynomials they stand for gives the identity 1 formally differentiates both sides with respect to t, and then multiplies by t, to obtain where the polynomial on the right-hand side was first rewritten as a rational function in order to be able to factor out a product out of the summation. Then the fraction in the sum and was developed as a series in t, using the formula, and finally the coefficient of each tj was collected giving a power sum. Comparing coefficients of tk on both sides one obtains which gives the kth Newton identity. As a telescopic sum of symmetric function identities the following derivation, given essentially in, is formulated in the ring of symmetric functions for clarity. Fix some k greater than zero, and define the symmetric function r for 2ik as the sum of all distinct monomials of degree k obtained by multiplying one variable raised to the power i with k minus i distinct other variables. In particular, r equals pk, for r the description would amount to that of ek. But this case was excluded since here monomials no longer have any distinguished variable. 
All products p x minus i can be expressed in terms of the r with the first and last case being somewhat special. One has since each product of terms on the left involving distinct variables contributes to r, while those where the variable from pi already occurs among the variables of the term from x minus i contributes to r, and all terms on the right are so obtained exactly once. For i equals k1 multiplies by e0 equals 1, giving trivially. Finally the product py x minus 1 for i equals 1 gives contributions to r equals r like for other values i less than k. But the remaining contributions produce k times each monomial of x, since any one of the variables may come from the factor p1. Thus, the kth Newton identity is now obtained by taking the alternating sum of these equations, in which all terms of the form are cancel out.